Hi, welcome back. You may have watched the part one of my unboxing of the M4 um, and not a great video, uh, a few views. Thank you very much, um, as you can see from here. It was um, my first gas blowback gun uh, and when it came, it was all right. It was a bit beaten up, tired um, and it didn't work properly, which is probably a bit of a, a faux pas. Um, but I've done some work to it. Uh, I've learned how to use it and how to operate it and how to maintain it. And now I have what I hope is a really nice gun. Have a look, see what you think. Thank you for watching. And if you like it, please do subscribe. I have a few subscribers now, but really my channel is still just growing. And I would love it if you would also just help me by commenting, liking, thumbs up, and even hit the bell if you want. Um, just be notified when more uh, gun reviews come out. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. It's free to subscribe. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it really helps me out. So looking at the construction of the M4, um, the gun is mainly metal. Uh, there are plastic uh, parts on there. So you have this plastic fiberglass uh, rear stock with a three point uh, adjustment. You've got a rear sling on here. Uh, the pin underneath is metal, but the rest of this is all plastic. Leading up to the metal stock and this metal stock lock. Uh, this again is metal. Coming down to the rear sling uh, mount, which is on the side there. As I say, the part of the gun is all uh, fully metal, uh, but the trigger, or sorry, the handle is plastic or polymer. Um, I know with the version two, they've uh, taken away this. Uh, some people find it very uncomfortable, uh, but I like it, I, it suits me well. The stickling on there is really good, uh, and it's good uh, for gripping when you've got your gloves on as well. Uh, the ejection port is uh, metal uh, with a plastic pin on there. Uh, and the uh, magazine release is a metal as well. This obviously is just a stand, so excuse me. You've also got uh, your picketing rail on top, again, which is fully metal. Coming on to the front rail, uh, I've replaced this from the uh, plastic one that was in my first video. Um, and this is, again, fully metal seven inch rail uh, with uh, picketing rails all the way around. Uh, so it enables me to put my handguard on the top, on the bottom. Uh, I've mounted a laser on here, only for when I'm clinking in the garden. Uh, I wouldn't use that on gameplay. This comes down to the M4 front sight, which again is metal, uh, with a uh, gas block underneath. Uh, with a f I've also left the fake gas tube in. The fake gas tube is good because it actually goes up into the, uh, to the base of the gun, and it stops your, uh, your uh, rail from coming loose. It did have the um, the button or the, the nut on here, uh, but this one is obviously replaced. So it's a free floating rail, although I have put a front cover back on there. 
Coming on to your 10 inch barrel, uh, which is obviously fully metal. Inside I've put um, a mad pole, um, upgraded bower inside. And then coming on to my mock suppressor, which again is metal, but realistically it does nothing and it serves no purpose, but it looks great. So inside you can see your travel bolt. This is your open bolt system. Uh, this again is fully metal leading back to the tube inside and this is obviously um, a plastic piece in there going down into your hot chamber. Flipping the gun around um, it's pretty much the same on the other side um, regards to all your rails again beautiful with a nice uh, etching on there so you know exactly where you are mounting all your parts. The uh, lock back pin is uh, is metal and so is the uh, metal select the metal select is crisp and then you've got your bolt on the top which again is fully metal which you've seen uh, or you'll see in the uh, in the takedown you also have your release pin which is here which you push through uh, and then that enables you to open up the gun. That again is a metal pin on there. There is a pin on the front here, which you can push through. And that also, again, uh, is so that you can dismantle the whole of the uh, barrel from the, uh, the stock, the receiver. So the definition of an open bolt is a full traveling bolt. Uh, this gives you a much more uh, realistic gun uh, for training purposes. Uh, it gives you a much nicer crisper noise than you would with an electric gun and it makes it much more of a realistic training gun. Definition of an open bolt. The scope I mounted on here is a 3 times 40 uh, giving you quite a nice sort of uh, view. This also has got a red dot on there as well or a green dot. And that then will just go down to the side here. Looking at the wall on here, um, you can see the trigger it doesn't come back too far. It's quite quick, so it's very responsive. Pull pound, really is very, very light. Reset though. It seems just to reset straight on itself. I guess the magazine is um, a metal construction um, with a metal outer case. Underneath you've got a metal plate with your uh, fill up valve. You've got your gas valve on the side here and on top you've got your feeding lip. The feeding lip is plastic um, and so therefore some people say it can be a bit weak. Um, I haven't had one break yet. They're not expensive to, to redo, but I'm hoping that's not the case. You have your gas uh, outlet there, and then you have this button on the side here. Now this button here, when you pull it back, drops that little switch down, if you see that again. So watch this bit here. So that then allows you to dry this dry fire. So if I now put this in, The gun will dry fire if it had gas in it. The advantage of that obviously is that you can then use that for a training uh, magazine. When you push that forward again, then the gun will lock back after its last shot, uh, which is obviously what you want because you know you need to replace the, uh, the magazine. The magazines themselves are quite heavy, but actually when it's all together in the gun, it's a heavy old gun. It's got some weight to it, but it is beautiful. I advised uh, that you use one of these to change your valves on your gas, on the magazines. Although they look like they may have a screw in there and you might just be able to unscrew it, the different tools on these will enable you to get these, to get these out without damaging them. Obviously you need to just uh, take the plate off, take the screw out of the bottom and then this magazine will, fall, will come out and then that gives you access to your gas valve. Then again, as I say, you just put them in, unscrew them. This is good for maintenance because you do need to obviously keep, make sure the O-rings are moist uh, and are oiled up. Same with the gun itself. 
um, making sure that all of the inside this is always lubed up because uh, it is high maintenance and has a lot of moving parts. You want to make sure it runs as smoothly as you can. Okay, I just wanted to spend a, a few minutes just explaining what happened when I got the gun and it wasn't working correctly. Um, the, as I said in the video, the gun was uh, shooting uh, and the balls were, the BBs were just dropping out the end. Um, what I did first of all was I took off the whole barrel uh, and doing so, um, I changed the hop-up unit on there, um, thinking that maybe the hop-up was, um, sorry, the, the hop rubber was uh, was broken and, and was defect. I also then cleaned all the barrel uh, and uh, with metal cleaner. The hop itself, or hop rubber, had deteriorated slightly. You can see there's some marking on there. Um, and it looked a bit old. So I put the whole thing back together again, and still it was doing the same thing. Obviously I had to replace the nozzle inside because uh, that had broken when, uh, when I'd fired it incorrectly. So next thing I did was the changed the entire hop. Um, I figured that this probably was, uh, was the problem. Maybe it was catching on here. Maybe the, um, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it was jamming in here inside. Also with the gas blowback, the nozzle goes round this internal ring. So I thought maybe this was getting dirty or something had cracked in there uh, and it wasn't getting a full connection, which meant the gas was seeping out from the side and not coming down the barrel. So I bought an entire new hop-up chamber and hop-up rubber, uh, the nub that went inside, replaced all that. Again, it still didn't work. I then bought a new end pass. The end pass is the part that goes into the gas nozzle in, uh, at the front of the gun. It sits inside and basically you have a you can then rotate it and this part on the end here comes up and down giving you more or less gas uh, when you pull the trigger. I figured that maybe the the end pass that was in there was a plastic one and that this would give me a, a better control on that. Installed that and again it still wasn't working. It turned out what happened is because it was a new end pass it was sticking at the front and it wasn't working properly. So I had to take it all apart, make sure it was all cleared out, and then it still wasn't working properly. Finally, after changing everything in the gun uh, and doing as much as I could, it still was just catching the balls with shattering. Um, and I found out, I found out what it was. And it was this part here, this tiny, tiny bit. This goes on the end of the nozzle, on the end of the barrel, and I'll show you closer in a minute. But it's got a dent on it, and when the balls were coming down, the BBs were just catching on it, causing it then to go off into the side, into the suppressor, and then shattering the suppressor. When the next ball ball came through, it was then getting caught. That, that tiny, tiny bit, cost me eighty pounds in in new bits. That said. The gun is all new and I can still use the old bits and, uh, and obviously use them for maintenance if I needed to. I have tried straightening this so it's not as bad but I'll show you what it looks like anyway. So if you see here, right here, this part here is bent upwards. I have tried straightening it a bit but that was why the BBs were catching when they were coming through, they were catching on this lip and then shooting up and not accurately or straight. So one drawback that I would suggest with the um, open fold bolt guns is the hop up um, adjustment on these. I have never known such a difficult thing. You usually have buttons on the side or clips or levers you can pull on the wing, no. To, to access the bolt, you have to pull back your bolt here and the chamber's in there. Now to actually adjust it, I made this. All it is is a little screw on the back of a bolt. So to adjust the hop up, you have to remove the pin, take out the open bolt, come down from here into the gun, get it in, adjust it slightly, 
put back all your assembly, close it back up, test it. If it's not right, again, open it, do all of this, put it back in. To get your hop up right is a real faff, a real faff. Hopefully when it's uh, done and set, it's gonna stay. I've now set this up for uh, 0.28 BBs and it is firing great, but I know I'm gonna have to keep adjusting it. Just be aware, the hop up adjustment on these is awful, awkward, difficult, a nightmare, challenging, quite frankly, a pain.
So, what are my conclusions and recommendations? I wanted a gas blowback gun and uh, I've got one. Um, I have to say, it makes me smile every single time I shoot it. It is fantastic. The kick on it is infinitely better than anything else you're going to get from an electric rifle. Even with the electric blowbacks, it's not the same. This thing has a good, good bolt, as you can see. I know having a gas coming out of it isn't ideal because it means it's been efficient, but that said, there's still something about when you see puffs and plumes of smoke or gas coming out from the, uh, the gun when you're shooting it. Uh, downside, it's heavy. Uh, it is a, a heavy gun. It takes a lot of maintenance. Um, you have to know um, and you have to be able to take guns apart uh, or airsoft guns uh, and to be able to, to do maintenance on them. When I bought this of, uh, on the first video, you see, I had really no idea what I was going to come up against. Uh, it's been a steep learning curve. Disadvantage as well is obviously you can't play with this in all weathers um, because you need uh, the gas was not uh, efficient. I know you can buy different types of gas with your green, uh, red gas, green gas and black gas, um, which will enable you to play in colder conditions. But still, it is really kind of more a, a, a summer gun, I think, to get it being the most efficient. A cost of £360 to £380 UK at the time of filming this is quite expensive. With that, you get the um, wrench uh, for the breakdown. You will get a flash hider on the front here. Uh, and you will get one magazine with the gun. The magazines are about £40 each, £40 to £50. Uh, I have five of them. I paid £300 for the gun. With the magazines i know it wasn't working properly but at the end of the day it's a good deal it gives me a, a good platform uh, for for what i wanted look at it i think it looks beautiful the action of it sounds fantastic buy one unless you've shot one of these things you'll never know aegs are good fun but this this is really this is really what you want. If you want the maximum feel of what it's like to shoot a legal or fully automatic gun, toy, then this is as good as it's gonna get, or as close as it's gonna get. Thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe, like. This is a new channel. Uh, I've only a few videos up and not many subscribers at this time. So any support, any comments, any, uh, anything you'd like to, to make an O on or anything that would help me to improve, truly appreciated. Thank you for your time.